Hey, it's Kimmy, the Gadget Goddess. We're gonna hop into our one weekend with the Vivo X Fold. Okay, so we were gonna do a one weekend check-in on this phone, but I had a change of heart and decided to do a two weekend check-in. I shot footage that day, so I'm gonna include that footage in here in this video and other things that I can use. But there's some other things that I kind of discovered on this phone within the past two weeks that I'd like to get into this video. If you haven't checked my video out on the Vivo X Fold Flip OEM case, make sure you check that out. I don't have it on it right now. I also had purchased a clear case. I don't really care for the front, so I'm just using the back when I'm at home. And I use the flip case when I go to work. I'm going to start off with things I don't like. RCS. I love RCS, it's my go-to. When it comes to sending pictures in RCS, for me, I'm reading around on XDA and some other places where people aren't having this problem. It's hit and miss. Like some people have the problem, some people don't. And right now, what I'm seeing is when I try to send a picture, sometimes the picture will clear, sometimes the picture will not, and I have to go back into the default text messaging app and send my picture, which can be a pain in the butt. If I get one to go through, I'm not getting a second to go through back to back. Or if I get one to go through to one person and I come over here and want to send one to somebody else, it's not going through back to back. So I already know if I've gotten one to clear, there's no need me trying another one right behind it because it's just not gonna happen because it should work. But for me, I really think it's a pain. Sometimes it'll give you just a no, Sometimes it will continuously try to send said picture and drain your battery. So then I proceed to just delete. I'll go through and send it in the default app that came on the phone. No harm, no foul, right? But a lot of us like RCS. I like RCS. I like to know when my pictures are delivered and the person's checked it and all that good stuff. So that's my number one gripe on this phone. I had a previous gripe, but I'm glad I waited another week before I got to my gripes about the phone because I like to have my apps to where I just flip the screen up and there they are versus uh, I think before when you flip the screen up the default on this device was to give you the widgets that were offered by the phone which most of those are Chinese kind of widgets things that I'm not gonna use but here you know I just got all my apps and I'm good to go I always like swipe up and if I need to search I can swipe down so either one of those you know swipe up swipe down I'm getting to my apps for anybody saying, hey, I don't like the alerts that come through with Chinese writing from default Chinese apps in the phone, you can turn those off. It's just like turning off any alerts on any other setting in your device. What you want to do is you want to go into uh, the actual settings and you want to go into notifications. And once you get into notifications, you want to get into app notification management. And when you go into app notification management if you want to go down to these apps that are giving you the notifications and just turn them off see allow notifications and turn it off I don't use their browser so therefore I'm gonna go into that and turn it off I think another one that comes through a lot is like the vivo app store if I can find that yeah so all of my vivo stuff here the wallet and everything I've just turned those off so if that's a problem for you, you turn it off you will never get another alert from those apps I do find I'm using this phone a lot more than I'm using my second phone. I, I carry two phones. And so this is my go-to, even though I carry the iQoo. There are a few things that I have on the iQoo that I don't have here and vice versa. That being said, I could go a day and a half, almost two days on one battery charge here, but it's so simple. Like every morning when I get ready, I don't charge my phones overnight. So when I get ready for work in the morning, I will stick the iQoo on its 120 watt charger. I'll stick this phone on the 80 watt charger while I shower, while I get ready for work. And when I leave to go to work, I just pull my phones off and leave and they're fully charged. Yes, 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 wonderful, wonderful to get a fast charging charger with your phone in the box when you purchase it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, people. I want to give a shout out to William Rohorn because you were very helpful for me and another commenter on my first video. Chinese variants usually don't allow you to run launchers. So that's usually my go-to answer. If you're picking up a Chinese variant, you cannot run a launcher on it. And that's not the case with this phone. I was able to download Smart Launcher 
Go into my default settings, change my default launcher to smart launcher. When I rebooted my phone, the launcher stuck. I am running the launcher from the phone, but I did test this theory out and it completely works. So appreciate you, William. Glad you came by the channel. Glad you made the comment. Now we know you can. And now I can throw that in my video. So anybody else who might have that question now knows that answer. I, I do love this fingerprint sensor on both parts of the phone that's just a very good convenience to have and the fact that you don't have to register it multiple times is awesome as well i did not have wireless charging on my huawei mate x2 yeah you might think that's an expensive phone not to have wireless charging but this bad boy does i can sit it on my charger at work i can sit it on my pixel charger i can charge it with any wireless charger and it works just fine when i first got the phone i used it exclusively even though i have two lines let me tell you exactly how the battery life went it was off the charger at 6 45 a.m i got a low battery the next day at 3 41 p.m and i got to one percent at 7 5 p.m that was constant bluetooth because i connect to my huawei watch here daily calls casual surfing you know things of that nature another thing i forgot to mention to y'all even though i told you about the mic and the speaker on this bad boy is it has an ir blaster i didn't notice during the unboxing i was probably more excited about the phone thank you vivo for including an ir blaster on this phone I am averaging a week an update. <laughs> Voice over LTE and Wi-Fi calling on this phone. That's a bonus. Usually you don't get those things from Chinese devices that aren't devices you can buy directly from the network. Kudos to Vivo. Did I mention that 5G works on this phone? I am on 5G right now and I have five bars. 5G also worked on my Huawei Mate X2. Wasn't quite as fast. And you know, depending on where you are, I get 5G here, I get 5G at my new job, and I used to get 5G at my old job. I didn't used to get 5G so much here though. So that's a bonus. So as you saw in my first video, my first impressions, unboxing, whatever, I did a lot of comparisons to this phone and the Huawei Mate X2. This phone for me seems to be lighter. I am still hunting a case that's going to be thinner in the front. It's kind of like the case journey I went through with the Z Fold 2. I'll link you to that. I could never find something that would allow me to use the gestures in the front of this phone. And if you have a thick case, you're not swiping over and getting anything. The screen protector on the inside has held up really well. It does not stick like my Huawei Mate X2 would stick. You could literally here when I would open it up it'd be like like I was pulling apart plastic or something but the screens would actually stick together and I would have to take my finger and rub those parts but I don't have that issue at all crease is pretty seamless unless I'm holding it in light like I am now so you can see it I have deleted most of the apps that I can delete apps that I cannot delete just don't have alerts turned on for them so I'm good in that area as well I have had some people ask me if this will fully work on AT&T. I don't have AT&T, I have T-Mobile, but I've answered in those comments that I've heard that you might get data to work, but you probably won't get phone calls to work. AT&T is really cracking down on people bringing imported devices onto their network. They're cracking down on anything that they can't sell you with you putting it on the network, even if it was a previous phone that was an imported device. Now that's hit and miss. Some people have been able to get other devices to work, you know, older devices that they've had and some people have called in like, hey, I've used this phone before. Why is it not working now? And AT&T tells them, hey, we've whitelisted that phone. It's not compatible with our network. We're not going to allow you to have it on. If you're an AT&T user, you may not be able to fully use this device. And it's pretty expensive for a tablet. I just say get an iPad mini. Right now, I'm using T-Mobile, Mint Mobile. Those kind of sims are going to work in this phone. I'd stay away from it if I had Verizon. And even if they allow you to have it on the network, it's going to be very crippled. But my crippledness with this phone is far less than it was with the Oppo. Had people ask me, hey, which phone is better, this or the Oppo? And it's just like, well, to me, that's like comparing apples to oranges. An Oppo is somewhere between a Z Flip and a Z Fold. This is definitely Huawei Mate X2 territory. I have not touched my Huawei Mate X2 since I got this phone. And that's one thing I couldn't get away from when I had the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. This is 
Huawei without the side loading, you know, in my opinion. And the pictures aren't Huawei quality, but they're very good pictures. If you have any questions and comments, feel free to leave them down below. Anything I've referenced as far as Vivo cases, I will leave links to in the description below as well. I will not be releasing a full review on this phone until I've had it at least a month. With that, I'm going to take it over to myself it's outside to wrap this video up. Now I've heard a number of people complain about the multitasking on this phone. You can do a split screen. You know, it's not the same as Samsung. Or you can drag in smaller screens with a quick app launcher you pull from the side and it gives you some suggested apps now these aren't always the apps you would like to use I am going to look and see if there's a way to tweak this maybe through ADB or something to where I can put more apps than what they have here which is very limited uh, maps play store and calculator calendar and things like that now using some of these open up a smaller app and then you can open multiple smaller apps you know this could be functional if you're not into the split screen across the sides most people want this whole horizontal thing to where it's just like I want an app here and an app here when I had the Z Fold, I could have probably five apps up at the same time. But to say I was going to use five at the same time probably wasn't honest. I could use two or three. And, you know, that would make the most out of this huge screen you have here. So that's a down for a lot of people. I'm still experiencing the phone, so it'll kick in in a minute. That's why I don't like to film reviews early because... This honeymoon period is real for a lot of people and they can't see any flaws when they've dropped 17 on the phone or they've dropped a thousand dollars on the phone. It's a perfect phone for them, right? I can tell you that I use developer mode and it constantly tells me that developer mode is running in the background. Now, if I tap this to get rid of it, my settings that I put in developer mode stop. So it stops developer mode if I clear this out. So therefore, I don't clear it out. I'm just happy that I get all my alerts and everything that I'm supposed to get to the phone as I should. The slider I like a lot more than one would think. I can shoot this video and not have to worry about people lighting me up. Chinese variants suppress your notifications. I made a whole video dedicated to this. It works on Huawei's, Oppo's, Vivo's, Xiaomi's. You go in and you have to tweak the settings. Otherwise, your alerts are going to be slim to none or very rare. So you get great battery life. I get wonderful battery life on this phone. Far better than I ever got on the Samsung Z Fold 3. I just find that when you get them from overseas they just give you a lot more bang for your buck if you're gonna spend the money you want it to last you all day then some last but not least i shot some pictures for you and a video this lens app they have on this bad boy is just wonderful you know with the super macro the ultra wide and the telephoto which i came to find out later on that you can change these to whatever you want. Video and night mode, pro shots, high resolution, astro cam, super moon, ultra HD documents, so more like a scanner, pro, pano, and photo. So just plain camera. So that's neat to have on the phone. Nowadays, a lot of people wanna use their phones instead of going to get a professional camera. I'm not gonna be the one to say that this is competing with a DSLR, but I took some nice pictures this afternoon. And it's taken me a while to find a camera that I could appreciate as much as I appreciate the Huawei. brighter too though I'm probably covering up the mic on both phones let me move my hand out of the way just wanted to give you awesome video footage from the vivo
kind of don't even want to know what's in there, lady. Lady, stop digging. Hey, hey, hey. Lady, stop digging. Stop digging, lady. I'd like to thank you for stopping by this channel, catching my week update with the Vivo X Fold. I'd like to thank you for your time because time is money and I hope you'll come back by the channel and visit your girl as we continue testing out the Vivo X Fold. I'll try to catch you on the next video if you're around. Holla!